Hello and welcome to Fix More Waste Less, where I try and fix broken electronics and keep them out of the landfill. Today, I'm gonna to go through a repair attempt that I did on a PlayStation 2 Slim. You might remember this particular console from my prior repair attempt, where it didn't have any power, and after replacing some fuses in it, I was able to restore power, but then the image on the screen was a little distorted it had these green lines going down it, as you can see in this picture here. So now I'm going to try and attempt to fix that picture. And let's just say things don't go as planned. I don't know exactly what's causing the green artifacts on the screen, but I've heard that these capacitors near the AV out port might have something to do with it. So kind of just on a bit of a whim, I decide to replace a capacitor. And, you know, I, d I didn't have any way of testing these capacitors against anything else to see if they were good or bad. They, no, nothing was shorted if that's in the indication right there at all, but these were all checking out fine, so I decided just to remove the big capacitor and to do that I used my soldering iron and tried to melt the leads. So here I am using my tip and you know most of this video is going to be just a learning experience for me and I hope a learning experience for you about ways to do things, ways not to do things. I do uh, learn pretty early on that the small conical tip I have just doesn't seem to be producing enough heat to get those pads underneath this uh, capacitor. It's a pretty big capacitor compared to the ones around it. And those pads are just requiring way too much heat than this little tip is producing to melt. But after a while, I finally get one side up and then the other one as well. So yeah, a little flux. Put the tip to the to the uh, connecting pad and let the hot station do its job. And with that part disconnected, we can disconnect it from the board. And that's where the first of our problems start to come in is that you can see the pad there has ripped from the board, which is never great. You never want that to happen. <laughs> no matter what you're doing. So uh, at that point, that's pretty pretty bad fail there on my part. I didn't desolder the capacitor from the pad fully and pulled the pad off with it. So now figure out where this pad is connecting to and I can see that there's a little trace from the corner here to this second resistor in the line. So I'll just have to take the new capacitor and make sure when I attach it that I'm attaching it to the right spot. So I did get the pad off the capacitor and the first thing I tried to do was connect the pad that I ripped off to the resistor with a little pad strip, very, very fine, thin wire. And I did manage to get the little wire you know, connected up to the small resistor there, at least for the time being. But once I went to try to connect the capacitor, it just wasn't going to happen. The, the solder was just melting too too much, and everything was disconnecting. I did have a donor board that I could use and it had a similar size capacitor in a similar area. So I just took that one off and it came off a lot easier without ripping a pad, which was nice. And then to connect it, I just wanted to clean up this one good working pad. I'm going to use my solder wick to wick away the old solder. And I think that actually turned out pretty good. It was shiny and then come in with some flux and some new solder to prep the pad. 
and all in all, I'd say that part went pretty well, but I think my tips just weren't, they needed to be a little bit higher for these bigger pads. You can see that it's just, they're not flowing as well as I like. And there, there it seems to work. And then this is where I try to prep the torn pad and it's just, it's a hot mess there, so. Yeah. All right, now with the newer capacitor, in place, I can come in with my chisel tip, which is probably a little big for this area, but it's getting the heat transfer I need on these pads. And I can attach the capacitor, and it just needs to be, mm, you know, pushed back a little bit at this point because it's covering up some of those resistors, and it's never going to make a connection to that pad that I'm still trying to get it to connect to but I will soon abandon that idea for a different idea. It's at this point where things take an even worse turn for this section of the board as I bring that chisel tip in and you can see there's a capacitor there and then there's not a capacitor there so where is it at? That's not on the board it's it's, it's gone. It's stuck to my soldering iron. I don't even know it for a while, but there it is. And then I realize eventually that, oh wow, that's missing a component. And it's the one I need to connect to. So that's not great. So this is all just going downhill at this point from bad to worse. And uh, it's kind of just all falling apart. Once I do find that missing resistor, I try and reconnect it, which isn't, it actually goes pretty well for being such a tiny component. My chisel tip's able to resolder it into place. Not an easy thing to do at all when working in such tight spaces, but it is possible. Okay. So I just wanna shore up that resistor, come in with a little bit of flux, a little bit of, a little bit of solder, and reflow these connectors to make sure that it's making a good connection. And it's not. <laughs> and it's giving me some issues. And now, after it comes off again, I discover that that resistor is just completely blown. It's it's not giving me any kind of reading that it should. The next step I do is to grow. I try to connect it and. I do manage to get the wire connected to it and to the pad where it should go, but it's just a complete bridge at this point with no uh, resistor there. So this isn't going to work. And the picture, while still amazingly working, was much worse than it originally started out with, which is no surprise. But that does let me know that possibly the green artifacts were from a capacitor. You know, so without that resistor, I, I do bring in a new resistor of the same rating and try to touch up this area and improve it. Uh, I need to remove this section here that's just a blob and reattach that wire to a resistor and the resistor to the other side of the pad. Um, so... Now, at this point, my soldering ability has gotten a little bit better. You can change the tip. I've gotten a little bit more practice since I started on this project. And I'm a little bit more in command of what I'm doing. 
and it actually goes pretty smooth with removing the wire from the bridges and connecting it to the side that it should be on at least in my opinion so you know practice helps but you know nothing can be perfect and I do end up scraping away another resistor in the process so you live you know one step forward two steps back you but with that wire in place and the capacitor still secure now I can come back in with uh, these resistors and actually re-solder them to the board and re-establish the connection that it should have had to begin with. So I come in here with some flux and just attach the resistor to the pad. It is about a size big but it's what I had and it's what I'm going to go with. At this point, this is really more an exercise in practice than a real attempt to fix this console. And then with that first one replaced, I can come in with the second one in the area that's been really devastated by my actions and connect the uh, wire from the capacitor to the resistor. and then connect it to the other pad. And check with the multimeter to make sure that I'm not, that these two resistors aren't connecting because they're not supposed to be, and they're not, but that resistor is connecting to the capacitor. So not perfect, but it is somewhat fixed compared to what I had it and like I said at this point I'm not trying to necessarily repair this console I'm just trying to correct mistakes that I've made along the way and learn so uh, after connecting this all back together put it back together enough to test it hooked it up to a TV and to see and yeah the artifacts are definitely still there and they're a little bit worse but they're better than they were um, beforehand when I had that resistor was completely gone. So uh, that does let me know that those green artifacts are probably being caused by the capacitors in that area. And maybe one day I'll go through and replace some more when I'm better prepared to replace those and, you know, better skilled at doing that. But for now, I'm just going to take this for what it is. A lesson learned and some practical experience on a real board. I do hope you learned something useful from this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. That would always be appreciated. And if you have any tips on finding out which capacitor might be the faulty one, so I'm not going through and replacing every single one, one at a time, please let me know down below. Um, and thank you for watching.